In this problem, we're talking about subtraction of fractions with borrowing, um, or regrouping is also what it's known as. So if you notice, the problem is written like this, 2 and 4 fifths minus 9 tenths. Uh, in addition and subtraction, you want to set your problem up vertically. So the first thing we do is just this, 2 and 4 fifths minus 9 tenths. Notice the fractions are right uh, above one above the other. Uh, if we had another whole number, it would have been here. This is essentially a zero if there's no whole number. Okay, so the first thing we have to do is find the common denominator. Com domino the common denominator of 5 and 10 is 10. Um, that just means that uh, you c it can't be smaller than either of these. It can be one of these. 5 times 2 gives you 10, so that's your common denominator. At any rate, 5 times 2 gives you 10, so 4 times 2 gives you 8. Not to be confused, it has nothing to do with this number there. It just happens to be the case. So then we end up with this fraction rewritten in higher terms. 4 fifths and 8 tenths are equal to each other. It's just another way of slicing it up. Okay, so, but now you have the problem that you cannot take 9 from 8 because 8 is smaller. So the top number up here has to be bigger than this one. So what you do is you borrow from the 2. So you cross out the 2, it becomes a 1. And the trick is, the question is, what happens here? Now this 18 do not be tricked. We did not get the 18 by simply adding a 1. The way you get it is you're adding 10 over 10. Uh, and in this case, that does happen to come up with the same answer. But what you do is you add this, 10 plus 8. That's how we got to 18. It wasn't simply by adding a 1 on there. Although in this question, it does look like that. At any rate, now you have 1 and 18 tenths and 9 tenths. Now you can subtract 18 minus 9 is 9 tenths. And we have 1 minus nothing is 1. So the answer is 1 and 9 tenths. Um, just to change this for a second so that um, it doesn't get too confusing, if this was a, um, uh, let's, let's just say we went up to, it's a totally new problem. Okay, let's just get a totally new problem. So if you had 3 and 5 eighths minus 6 eighths, this is to demonstrate borrowing again. Uh, you can't take 6 from 5, so you have to borrow. So if 3 gets crossed out, it becomes 2. We know that the 8 is going to be here. That's an easy part. That doesn't change that. The 6 eighths doesn't change anything down here. Okay, so now the question is, what is the new numerator? It does not become 15. You add the old numerator and denominator together. 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. Right? So 13 over 8 becomes your new, uh, new numerator. So now 13 minus 6 is 7. Eights, you never subtract denominators, and the two comes down, two seven eighths. This is a better example of borrowing. Uh, again, notice it did not become uh, 15 over 8, it became 13 over 8, and where we got the 13 is by adding the 8 and the 5.